It's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home. And boy, have we got a massive amount of weird radios today. I mean, the stuff that you're going to find in this video, you'll want to watch all the way through. I find some of the strangest things going on in this video. Anyways, let's go ahead and start with this marine radio. Now, I know what you're thinking. Johnny, doesn't your butthole come unpuckered when you die? And yes, it does, and that's why I had to stop using myself as a piggy bank. Anyways, so this is a marine radio. Um, I It's not illegal to transmit um, with a marine radio. Plus, even if it were, I have it going into a dummy load. Um, which, this is only about an 8 watt dummy load, so we can't be running this for long. But it doesn't actually work. No, just kidding. You know, I don't give up that easy. Um, I didn't realize, though, it has a 1 watt and a 25 watt here. Um, there's a lot of different channels that uh, you can use um, on marine radios, and I'll show you. Let's go ahead and turn the squelch down, see if we can actually hear any static. I don't know if we can. I don't know. But it has a dimmer function right here. It says 16. So I think 16 is a very special um, channel, although I wouldn't know unless I look something up. Hmm... Do I have some sort of way of knowing about these things? Let's look on the wall. Oh. Well, all right then. Okay, so here's the radio service codes. You got um, uh, ship recreational or voluntarily equipped uh, or ship compulsory equipped. Basically, what that means is you don't have to have a marine radio in your uh, ship. If you're just fishing or something, that would be a voluntary thing. Um, larger ships, though, do have to have specific equipment. So, if you're out there fishing and you want to have a radio, you can use these. So, it's not against the law. And, let's see, channel 16. Here's channel 16. That is distress, safety, and calling. So, it's kind of like... Channel 9 on a CB radio, even though we don't use Channel 9 anymore. Alright, so we have our Cobra 21 LTD here. I hooked it up because Tater is wanting it, a friend of mine. And at first, no sound whatsoever, no transmit, no receive. And then, of course, this is something I do on every radio. I went ahead and messed with the PACB back and forth. Because occasionally that can get... Uh, either stick or become dirty so that it doesn't actually connect to anything um, and now I actually have modulation one two three audio one two three audio so I do have modulation um, the thing is though if I transmit listen one two three one two three one two three hello 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 nothing right but let me tap it a few times Okay, check this out. Audio one, two, three, audio. Hello, how are you? Listen to my voice. I sound really low. I'm a monster. <laughs> and it is working now. Check one, two, three, audio check, one, two, three. So certainly a lot better than it was. Just took some rotation. It looks like we're on channel 15, 15, 15, 15. 15. But it's just because the there's two LEDs out. That confused the hell out of me for a second. Check one, two, three. Audio check. One, two, three, four. Hello. So it's sounding a lot better now than it did. All I did, honest to God, was just mess with the knob some. I opened it up. I can't see any damage. So I'm guessing it's all right. I started messing around with them knobs a whole bunch, and it started working just fine, I tell you what. Okay, here's our Uniden PC-76 XL. That's a good sign. Uh, let's turn our RF gain up, mic gain up, squelch down, delta tuned in the middle. Make sure channel line's working. CBPA. Let's mess with that a few times. One, two, three. Audio. Audio. One, two, three. Audio. One, two, three. Audio. Oh, yep. See? All it takes is messing with the um, CBPA function. That's all it takes. So, 
You find yourself a radio in an old junkyard or something, why the hell you'd be in a junkyard? I probably should have said uh, flea market. But let's just say you're in a junkyard. Well, if you find an old CB radio in a junkyard under a pile of bones that happens to be Freddy Krueger's corpse, bury the corpse, put holy water on it, and then mess with the buttons a few times. All right, that works. Let's test receive. No receive. That's not good. Wait, I just heard some for a second. Listen. There. Test one, two, audio test one, two, three. Check, check, check. It, it does work. Just needs a little bit of a, a cleanup. Like I said, whenever you get radios like this, just play with the settings a bunch on them. I mean, I had one radio. It was, um, what was it? It was um, a Cobra 89, Cobra 89, I think it was. Um, 88, Cobra 8, I can't remember. It's, it's, it was an old um, radio, 23 channel. Um, and I actually have three in the closet I have yet to review. Um, it was a really important radio to me for reasons I'll get into later. But I remember when I first got that thing, none of the none of the channels would come in. Not a single channel. And I just kept rotating that knob. And it took me literally a good 15 minutes of rotating that knob until every channel would come in. And it was just the contacts that were dirty on it. All right. That's working. Okay, so I traded a radio for an exact copy of the Radio Shack TRC446 that I got in the previous eBay lot. Um, so this is an exact copy, and um, or the same model. And you can see that we have up and down and lock channel buttons on here. And we can lock the channel, which keeps it from moving. If we unlock, it will move. This is what the five pins are for um or the six pins and um so you could probably use this with a standard microphone you could wire it up just fine that's all that there you really use for is just the extra um up and down buttons so anyways i know this one works just fine we are going to try out the one we got in the ebay lot Okay, let's give it a shot here. Oh, it's, it is on. Okay, it's on PA though. Okay. The flashing, by the way, is because it's on channel 9. It'll do the same thing on 19. That means it's locked. If I go to normal, we get uh, control of the mic. Otherwise, you do not get control of the mic. So the mic is working on here. Let's see if it's putting out anything. Sort of odd. <clears throat> Turn off ACE, which is Audio Clarity Enhancer. It's basically the same damn thing as, as far as I can tell. I don't know. But it's pretty much like a sound tracker on a Cobra. It um, it says that it boosts the um, signal that you're receiving while suppressing noise. And while you're transmitting, it cleans up any of the noise that you're sending and allows the other person to hear you. So it must be voice compression as far as I know. So it's probably similar to the um, sound tracker uh, function on Cobras. However, with that, you need two Cobras with sound tracker for that to work effectively. Um, it would still work and people could still hear you with sound tracker on, but um, when you turn on on both radios, you do get a significant benefit compared to not having it on one of the radios. See, 
You never know what's wrong with a radio, so play with all the settings. It's like another weird feature of this radio is if you're keying down, you cannot change the channel at all. So when you unkey, you change channels. But when you're keying, you cannot change the channel. So unfortunately, we'll have to take this one apart, but that's the beauty of it. You never know what you're going to get and, uh, and enjoy working on them when you do get one that's messed up. Anyways, next radio. Realistic Mini 23. Well, that's not a good sign already. Oh, wait. There's a light there. All right. Let's chance the devil. The devil won. Shit. <laughs> no modulation, unfortunately. Audio. Actually, there's something there. Odd. Uh, wait. Hello. Audio. 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 And the devil lost. Hello. Audio. One, two, three. Why do we do this? Because I don't know what else to say. Nacho cheese. One, two. Nacho cheese. It sounds like music or something. This is the second radio I've had. 23 channel, it picks up FM radio. All right, let's see if we can find it. And I know this is FM radio because I know what radio station that is. Station this is on. Now I'm pretty sure it's 102 or something. Um, familiar with it. And I can maybe find the location of the station nearby and see if that's what's happening. If it's just an overwhelming signal. That was not on purpose. <laughs> there you go. Okay then. So, you know what's weird? <clears throat> Here's the weird part. The reason why that was on that station last is because the last radio, the 23 that I had that was picking up FM was one was on, on that station. Um that is the same station, so therefore it must be really close. Okay, so here's my theory on this. Channel 23 is 27.255 megahertz. If you take the fourth harmonic of that, you get about 108.9. We're listening to 102.9. Um, now, FM does have a band spread of about um, 0.2 megahertz, 200 kilohertz. Um, but I don't think that has anything to do with it necessarily, as far as that's why we're getting it. I think there's maybe some um, just poor attenuation with the trap circuits some things have changed over years things have shifted got old but mostly i think what it is is not only the radio but the fact that i live 20 miles from this broadcasting station i live 20 miles from this massive tower broadcasting something very similar to the frequency that this is supposed to pick up um i could drive there in 31 minutes <laughs> so I think that has a lot to do with it, and that's why the other radio was picking up the same station, around 23, 22. Um, Bob, I always have these moments where I say Bob would love this, because Bob was talking about they actually took these and made them into FM radios in his country. And uh, now I won't speculate as to if the um, fact that it's so poor at refusing FM that they just went with it and decided, hey, let's make an FM radio out of it. I won't speculate on if that had anything to do with it because, you know, that would be silly. But I, it is fun to note that, hey, Bob, I got an FM radio too, buddy. How do you like that? Yeah. Anyways... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to the next one. All right, so this is the Realistic TRC-474. When I first got this, the top cover was off. So, you know, there was no screws. So I figured this thing's ruined. There's no way it's going to work because 
someone's already been in here. They didn't bother putting the screws back, so they didn't have any hope for it, obviously. Um, so I figured, I'm thinking I better just try this out before I make a video on it, because it's probably ruined anyway. Um, so I tested it with a mic that it came with, and we got a carrier, and that's it. Um, I went ahead and replaced it with my noise-canceling preamp mic, and we do get modulation. Um, here we go. Audio, Oreo, 74, 92, hop. Yeah, so we are actually getting some, uh, modulation. I don't know what the, why people got rid of this thing, um, and left the top off of it. I have no clue. Um, you would think, oh, well, there's no channels, but that's just, a that's just because we're on channel 9, so go channel 13. Um, there you go. No blown LEDs, nothing like that. We do receive just fine. Let me turn the squelch down and the RF gain up. So we receive. We got a tone function. Tone function works. And <clears throat> let's go back on nine. I'll show you that it does indeed do what I say it does. Check one, two. Let me turn that up a bit. Aha. Well, I thought I was out of it, but I guess I wasn't out of the rough. Now it was just receiving fine. You heard. I'm hearing shit now. That's weird. I just started working again. Check one, two. All right. No longer receiving. Okay, so after rotating all the knobs to make sure there's no corrosion and build up on them, um, doing the same thing with the switches, we finally seem to uh, be okay. Check one, two, three. Check, 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 check. I have a check for you. Sorry, we take cash only. Um, it is working. So, that's probably going to have to be cleaned and kept an eye on. Because I, when I get a radio like this, it's like, oh, well, it's starting to work. And now it seems like it's perfect. I don't like selling them. I really don't. Because you never know when that issue is going to pop back up. And you got to be really careful about it. So, <clears throat> when I get radios like this, what I do is I use them multiple times. I hook them up at different times of the day. Wait a couple of days, hook them up. If I don't notice any issue, if the issue is completely gone, then I can sell them. But if I notice it even one time, I can't sell that. You wouldn't want to sell that to someone. Anyways... So, I, I was surprised, but here we go. We got it. All right, next radio. Okay, here we have the Pace 8010. Uh, you're probably wondering why they held the tops off of it. And honest to God, I did not believe this had a board in it. This thing was so light, if you had bet me before I opened this up a dollar, I would have took that bet that there was no board in this. That's how damn light this thing is. Um, I want to go ahead and weigh it. Um, actually, let's let's go ahead and transmit and receive and all that shit. And then I want to show you just how light this thing is. Check one, two. Audio. Check one, two. Roger, Roger. Roger, Dodger. Don't you remember that uh, movie? What was it? Uh, uh, that, that movie with the rabbit who framed Roger Rabbit. And then it had that really, really attractive cartoon lady on it. Um, and everyone got all hot and bothered over that. Wasn't that weird? So it's working just fine. Um, it's receiving. And let me go take the volume as far as I can down because the speaker's on the side, so it isn't actually suppressed by being on something, which is a nice feature, by the way. Check, one, two, three, audio check. Um, now that's very low volume. So that's a nice feature. I like that. The fact that um, if you did place this flat down on a surface, you'd still have no problem hearing anything so i want to pull out my scales and weigh this thing and show you why in the hell oh another interesting thing before we do that you can see the relay work as we talk audio hello that's cool it's omron now i know omron made switches but i thought they were relatively not a new company but um i remember them making mouse switches so they must have been making switches for a long time I'll have to look that up. Anyways, let's weigh this thing. Okay, so this comes out to 1.59 pounds. To put that in perspective, a Uniden PC33 weighs 
1.6 pounds. Um, I don't know if you saw that in the last video. It's a very small radio. Um, now, you're, oh, well, there's no cover on it. The cover weighs nothing. It's made out of plastic. In fact, I'll show you. The cover, the cover is just nothing but plastic. This, uh, this case right here, or the chassis, is lightweight aluminum. The switch is plastic. Um, you know, I would say, well, they went with plastic. Why didn't they make a heavier duty radio? But that's not necessarily the case. Um, there's nothing wrong with plastic as long as the circuits are well built. And for this thing to be working still, it's very surprising. In fact, it's a very unique design. I've never seen anything quite like it. Not that I've been around long enough to see everything. There's a bit of corrosion in the back, but it's it seems to be a very solidly built um, construction on the board and everything. It's just made out of plastic and really lightweight aluminum. Uh, it's just very odd to see. Anyways, um, I want to pull out some other stuff and weigh them and I'll let you get an idea of how light this really is. It's a radio we just worked on coming in at 1.95 pounds. Now, with the cover on it, this is about 2 pounds. So, <laughs> this weighs the same as this. Um, in fact, let me see how much my sound tracker weighs just for kicks. 1.15. Of course, got batteries in it and such, but wow, I cannot freaking believe how light this is. It's almost a joke how light this is. Uh, you know me, I love old radios, and especially interesting looking ones. How will I ever part with this thing? How am I going to get rid of this thing? I don't know. Anyways, next radio. Okay, here's our Cobra 40 Plus. We're going to see how this one works. I did hear it come on. Let's see if we're on. We are on. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take this mic out. Okay, let's uh, try it out with a different mic. Oh, boy. That is an issue. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Okay. So we key down. We are getting a high pitch squeal. We're going to go ahead and trick this thing and see if the mic configuration is wrong. Okay. Here's what we get with no mic in. Squelch up. Turn it on. I don't hear anything. Let's turn squelch down. volume further down makes it louder for some reason well i think we happened upon one finally after all this time that is actually having a lot of fucking issues this is um this is a problem here i wonder if you notice anything weird with this radio off the bat i mean i'm trying to look here hmm wait a minute what's this thing it looks like someone has soldered a resistor. It looks like, is that a 100 ohm resistor? Um, to the speaker. Uh, I'm guessing they were trying to ground noise. I'm not a genius by any stretch of the imagination, but this doesn't seem like it would work to me. Let's cut this off and see what happens. So I just yank that little bastard off of there and... And I'm getting shocked <laughs> over here. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so when we plug the mic up, we're still getting a high pitch sound. I don't know if that sound was there before. Um, in fact, you can still hear it. Uh, surprisingly, um, I don't see any major issues with the back of the board. The only thing a little weird is this right here, which looks factory, but it's got a cold solder joint right there. 
That could be it. This speaker will shock you. It's got high voltage on it. If you put your fingers across here, it will shock you. Speaker is completely gone. Whine is still there. Yes, I can audibly hear a whine, even though the speaker is gone. And we're hearing vibrations from something that's making a squeal. So actually, no, the squeal is coming from this end. This was a reflection. It's coming from this end, around um, this transformer here. So we have a power issue, and they might have caused it. I'm not sure. Okay, so I took that little piece here that looked like it was just bodged on there. I took that off. You ever seen a radio that um, the power on it is controlled by the volume? I'll show you. Here we go. Here's our maximum, maximum super power volume pot. So that little piece that I took out of here, I was talking about last time, actually made it um, work. So I was right. That is not factory. Uh, ah. You can still hear that but you can actually transmit now and modulate. So, something is gonna have to go. And most likely that's gonna be, I don't know, I'm, I, it's coming from where the um, transformers are. I might have to replace one. All right, last off, we do have a blown capacitor in the radio right here. Well, I'll be goddamn, look what else we found. A capacitor. That's why that little piece was there. Because the capacitor was on the other side, right there. Next up, we have our Robin radio. It's a mystery radio um, because the logo has been taken out the front. So um, I'm sure there's a model on the back now that I think of it. But let's uh, see if it works. Boy, that's old looking, isn't it? That reminds me of how the tram D42 looks. The numbers look like that. Wait a minute, is this only a 23? You've, you, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, so I don't actually have a microphone for this. What I've done is I've hooked up this Uniden Marine radio microphone. And the reason I did is because it actually makes the audio work. So, what we're going to have to do is pin this between our knees, like this and see if it works and it's already getting some static so one two three audio audio it's a little bit um well the audio's uh kind of off on this thing for sure but uh, yeah okay wow it transmits just by shorting the pins So indeed, there is a carrier there. I've never seen a radio like that. A 23 channel radio with an LED display. Wow. Now, the weird part on this one has got um, an external speaker right here. So you can actually have the external speaker out of line by pushing this button. So in and out. I've never seen that at all I've just seen you know you got a jack on the back where you you plug yourself a, a speaker in and that's what you're stuck with there's no option so that's pretty cool so by far this has been the oddest bunch of radios I've ever gotten on eBay pretty much everything here save for a few had really quirky or interesting things going on with them and uh, yeah it took all night but I had a lot of fun now I gotta leave you with your two songs as you remember, you'd better. So your songs of today are, or the day are, um, I chose ACDC. A lot of songs by ACDC. Um, you guys know, I'm sure, Hell's Bells, Back in Black, Highway to Hell, you know, the popular ones. But um, I'm a huge ACDC fan, so I wanted to choose a Bon Scott era gem that maybe you haven't heard of. It's called Touch Too Much by ACDC. The next song is by a very underrated man 
someone who I cannot understand why he didn't get more recognition. Um, I don't know if you'll know him or not. His name is Guy Clark. He's a very good songwriter. Um, definitely on Willie Nelson's level of songwriting. He's very good. Um, he wrote songs like um, L.A. Freeway, Randall Knife, Dublin Blues. But the one that I'm recommending today that you listen to is called Desperados Waiting for a Train. Now, there's two different versions, one where he says son of a bitch and one where he says son of a gun, kind of like the Charlie Daniels band that went down to Georgia. And I think there's some discrepancies because I remember looking through the videos preparing for this, so making sure that it was on YouTube for you guys to find the song. One version has a ton of dislikes, one has a lot of likes. And I'm guessing maybe it was because of that. Um, I didn't go through the whole song to figure out if that was what it was, but... Um, Hopefully you guys find the right version out there. Anyways, it's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home, and I'll see you later.